Welcome back to Minecraft Philosophy. We will now move for a little bit away from questions about reality and begin discussing morality. Many of the most famous philosophers, who were famous for their works in other fields of philosophy, also discussed ethics. Some people might even argue that ethics is the most important field in philosophy, since it is a major part of our daily lives. First off, it's important to understand the distinction between the two subgroups of ethics. What we normally talk about, and the focus of this video, is normative ethics, which deals with what kinds of actions are right and wrong. The other subgroup, which will be the focus of either the next episode or the one thereafter, is metaethics, which deals with questions like, what are right and wrong, and how do facts about the world uh, become statements about morality. You have likely heard many, sometimes conflicting theories about normative ethics during your life, from many different sources, like religion, your parents, or society. Even without all of these different theories, it can still be hard to determine exactly what you should do in difficult ethical situations. Even people who claim to follow objective moral codes uh, will often come upon difficult situations where they aren't sure how to act. Now, let's take a look at some different ethical scenarios and how different philosophers might handle them. One day, I was hanging out on a bridge overlooking some minecart tracks. Hmm, these are really dangerous minecart tracks. They lead right into that lava. Hope they're not still used. Hey, what's that guy doing on the tracks over there? Good thing they're not activated. If they were, he'd probably be sent to his death. Hmm, kind of looks like this lever controls those tracks. I should be careful not to pull it. Holy cow! Oh, looks like they're trained with five people coming towards it. Gotta stop them. Oh no, I sent a man to his death. Oh, you're safe now. Oh no, a train hurtling towards the lava. I, I can't kill this guy. I would feel horrible. No. They're all dead. Oh. In my story, I had the choice of either pulling the lever, which would lead to the death of one villager, or not pulling, leading to the death of five people. Some people argue that pulling the lever amounts to killing the one person. On the other hand, some people argue that not pulling the lever amounts to indirectly killing the five people. Whether or not inaction counts in ethics is an important factor in ethical decisions. A couple days after I saw that train hurtling towards the lava, I found myself standing in a field near some tracks. Whoa, that hole goes deep. I think it might even go beneath the world. Wouldn't want to fall down that. Why do these tracks all lead to horrible places? Oh, hey dude. Oh no, a bunch of people are headed towards the tracks. Oh no, they're gonna fall down that hole. Ah, those poor people. No stop train. Oh, I think they're all gonna die. Oh no, the train's coming this way. Gotta stop it. No. Oh no. I think I killed that man. Oh, but at least it stopped the train. These people are safe now. Any difference between this scenario and the one before lies entirely in the way that you stop the train. In the first one, all that was required was pulling a lever. But in the second one, I actually had to push a man in a minecart to his death. Uh, it's much more direct action, and so many people decide not to do the second one when they say they would pull the lever in the first scenario. After those two ordeals, I decided to get a job as a doctor, to help people out. After a while, I got five patients, each with a different failing organ, and no available donors. This made me feel very sad. One day, 
A healthy man came in for a checkup. Hmm. It looks like he has a perfect candidate for transplants with all of my patients. If only I could take his organs and give them to my patients. Oh, what should I do? If I kill him, five people will live. But if I don't, all of them will die. Oh, quite the ethical quandary. All right, Mr. Smith, I'll be back for you in a minute. I think I've decided. Ah! I just can't do it. Oh, I guess my patients will die. It's so sad. The three scenarios I just went through have one major thing in common. It's five people for one person. They differ, however, in the actions required to save the five people. In the first one, all I had to do was pull a lever. In the second one, I had to push the man to his death. And the third one, I had to kill him and give his organs to my patients. Each one requires more action from the agent. And so what at first sight seems like three very similar ethical cases uh, suddenly becomes a much more difficult situation. Someone might answer to the first one that they would pull a lever while declining to act in the second and third cases. Let's take a look at how other philosophers uh, deal with these situations. There are a couple different theories in normative ethics that all have something to say about these scenarios, but we will only deal with the two most prominent ones here. Consequentialism argues that an action's rightness or wrongness can be calculated from the consequences. Deontology, on the other hand, claims that we have certain duties, and that based off of these duties, actions are right or wrong, regardless of the consequences. The main theory on the consequentialist side is utilitarianism, which was first advocated by Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. Utilitarianism holds that when choosing actions, one should go with the choice that works for the greatest good for the greatest number of people. In each of the earlier scenarios, I was presented with a decision between five people and one person. The utilitarian in the first scenario is presented with what might seem like an easy math problem, but in the later scenarios, the path chosen by utilitarianism seems more gruesome and less like ma basic math. After all, I doubt that many people would be willing to murder an innocent man in order to salvage organs. And if there is such a person, I don't think I want to meet them. Immanuel Kant argues that an ethics based off of utilitarianism represents only hypothetical imperatives, that is, things that we have a choice about. For instance, if you want to lose weight, then you should exercise. Or in ethics, if you don't want to cause sadness for that man's family, then don't kill him. Kant believes that what is needed for ethics is not hypothetical imperatives, but rather categorical imperatives, that is, duties. How then do we know exactly what these duties are? Probably the most famous line from Kant's ethics is, Act only according to that maxim whereby you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law without contradiction. His answer is just that if you were to universalize a maxim based on your action, that is to say, assume that everyone does the same action as you, you would not run into any contradictions. For example, suppose that lying were universalized, then all of language would be undermined, since everyone would assume that any statement would be a lie. Therefore, lying, when universalized, contradicts itself. If we take Kant's ethics and apply it to the earlier scenarios, then it seems like we would not be able to directly act in any of them, since it would require killing. However, if we do not act, then in some respect we are indirectly killing. When put into a situation where the only options available are all contrary to our duty, Kant's system also seems problematic. How then are we supposed to act? Is there a correct choice at all? 
These will be the focus of the next episode. Tell me what you would do in each of the scenarios depicted in this video in the comments below. And remember to subscribe so you can see when the next episode comes out. Thanks for watching.